most other candidates. So, you know, they don't have to go out and raise a lot of money. They don't have to campaign. But they do have to interact with us delegates because they obviously want our vote. But they, they want that nomination. So, um, if there's not a contested, you know, if there's not two people running for the same spot, it's, it's pretty, you know, cut and dry. But, uh, like, two years ago when we had our state convention, we had like four people running for treasurer, I think is what it was. And, um, that race came down to three votes. So it's vital that everyone come, you know, that, that is a delegate goes to the state convention and stays the whole time. I mean, I know it's a, it can be a long, drawn out process. You go from vote to vote, and with every vote, the lowest vote getter drops off. So you have to go vote again because you they have to get 50 percent plus one so the state treasurer's race last time came down to three votes daniel elliott became our treasurer nominee being uh at least shallow by three votes so it's, it's vital that the delegates do their job the delegates stay there for the entire convention so it, it's a, a vital thing and uh, this year it has been kind of exciting because a lot of years I have to find people to fill my spots. Fulton County has seven delegates. So a lot of years I have to go and drag people basically in and appoint them as delegates. They don't get uh, you know, elected in the primary process because we just we don't have enough people running. This year, for seven spots, I have 11 people running for those seven spots. So that is a milestone for me, anyway, as party chair, and I'm really happy about that because, you know, I am not afraid of primaries, and, and you know, some of the incumbents may not like that attitude, but I'm not afraid of primaries because number one, it makes you a better candidate, and number two, and most importantly, it's one of the reasons why we're here. It gives the voters of Fulton County a choice. So the, the uh, candidates get to come and talk about what they believe in, why they believe the way they believe, why they think their policy is the best moving forward, and the voters get a chance to hear that, and they get a chance to decide which candidate they want to support in the election. So that's why I'm not afraid of primaries. I, I, I'm really glad that we have the opportunity in Fulton County to give the voters choices. So that's kind of my spiel on things. Okay. So we're going to move now to uh, the candidates. So first up, they're going to come and I asked someone, one of them anyway, if they had their stump speech ready. So we're going to come up and give their speech. So we're going to start with the commissioners. Two commission candidates are unopposed, but this is your opportunity to hear from them. So um, I'm going to ask David Summers to come up. Dave, I've got my three minute timer here. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Since you told me I already got 15. <laughs> I'm Dave Summers. I am your district one commissioner candidate. Uh, currently I'm serving the end of Steve Metzler's term. I, I caucused him just a little over two years ago. It was, actually, it was two years ago in March. And uh, I'll be honest with you, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I really didn't know what I was getting into, and I told everybody when I got caucused in, I said, you got somebody that's coming in unbiased because I said I don't have a clue as far as what other things happen, but I was going to do the best I could for Fulton County. And I feel like I have done that. I've got, Thrown right into the whole mess as we were working on the 911, getting all that, our new center all set up and going, and spent a lot of time uh, working with Rick and Gail, and those two especially. We were back and forth in Indianapolis working with, as you mentioned, Dan Elliott. Uh, we worked a lot with him and with uh, Rudy Yakum and, and Griffin and getting everything hooked up and getting things going. So that was quite an initiation getting going. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I am married. Uh, Dottie's back here. You know, we're in that 
46, working on that 47 years, and uh, 15 or 16 grandkids, and one great grandkid, so that kind of keeps me going there with the other jobs that I've got, but I thoroughly enjoyed it, and I appreciate the vote.
One, one thing we were looking at, Kosciuszko County's got a good plan together. What we like about Kosciuszko County plan is if, if solar comes next to you and your property value drops, say you got a $150,000 house, they, they put solar or wind next to you, then if your house is only worth $100,000, they got to make that payments. So it's, it's basically a price guarantee if somebody comes next to you, which we like that aspect of it. So, so if you don't lose money on the deal. So. Okay. How many hours on average do you spend a week on county business? <laughs> I, I'm going to say 30, sometimes more. Just like, for example, we had a meeting yesterday morning. I got home for it. It was at, at uh, 8 or 8.30. I got home 4 30 yesterday afternoon, and it was supposed to be about an hour or so as we. It seems like every time we come in, there's somebody else that catches us. We walk through the building. We need help here, we need help there. We, uh, sometimes it's putting out fires, other times it's uh, helping out. There's just a lot of different ways that we spend a lot of hours in, and probably 30 is more conservative. That's what I was teasing Dave about that he said when he talked us in. The sheriff told him it was only two meetings a month. <laughs> and that's why I keep asking how you're two meetings a month working out. <laughs> Any other questions? Any more questions? That's okay. Hi. Does the county have any plans for if an EMS agency is not found prior to the June 30th deadline that we can set? You want me to take it or do you want to take it? Um, yeah, well, yes. Uh, Heartland, we, we can get it with, with Heartland. Heartland had offered, we, we was having trouble. Before we signed the agreement saying that Luther would stay until the end of June, Heartland told us you give us notice and we'll have you ambulances within 6 to 24 hours in your county. Now, it's going to cost us. There's no doubt about that. But we will have ambulance service, so there is backup plans. If, if it all fails, but we hope we don't come to that. You know, like you mentioned over here, if you know of ambulance services around the state or that would like to work in this area, uh, we're interested. We're listening. Uh, we're trying to find the best quality service we can get for everybody at the least amount of cost, of course. But uh, we are looking. We are wanting. We've got an ambulance committee that's been working on it. We do have a meeting next week with Parkview to try and iron some things out to see if we can put things together. But it's, and we did put, or the council did vote to uh, put a lift tax on of 2% of income. That'll raise us about a million dollars a year. Well, as you've heard, we're looking at anywhere from one to two million dollars a year. So it's not gonna be enough to cover us. We're at the council, and with, hopefully we're gonna be able to help them to tighten the belt up in the county and to be able to find an English service that will work for everybody. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Thank you. So, you know, there are several members of the County Council here tonight as well, and Rick and, and Dave have both talked about. You can't imagine what they've been through as a county council and the commissioners, you know, Brian Lewis is the other commissioner to deal with this, this ambulance service. So thank you, thank you, thank you for everything you've done and trying to uh, provide us service that we, we definitely need. Okay, next we're gonna have the auditor candidates come up. So Kathy, come up. I'm a daughter of the late Richard and Sanja Easterday and a lifelong resident of Fulton County. 
I grew up on a beef, dairy, grain crop farm in northwest Fulton County. I continued to live there and farm with my siblings. I graduated from Rochester High School in 1985. In 1996, I received a BS degree in agriculture from Western Kentucky University. In 2021, I married Terry Adamson, my wonderful husband. We have two sons, Derek and Clayton, and three grandchildren. I was taught from an early age that hard work and dedication should be applied to all aspects of my life. As the current Fulton County Treasurer, former member of the Fulton County Council, and the previous clerk treasurer for the City of Rochester, I have the current government knowledge as well as experience working with the State Board of Accounts and DLGA. My knowledge of county government and the ability to work with different offices and departments will be a great asset to the auditor's office. I am ready, willing, and able to continue to move the, office, the auditor's office forward with the experience I've gained and I'm up for the challenges that lie ahead. I would greatly appreciate your support May 7th to put my skills and experience to work for you in the tax credit of Tulsa County. Okay, next up is the other candidate for Fulton County Auditor, Lori Hurst.
also served a lot of times. I've gone to the Indiana State Treasurer's Public Management Seminars and um, Public Funds and graduated from the State Treasurer's Office with those degrees. I am a certified food manager because right now I cook for people in the county. I like to make them happy. So that's what I currently am doing along with being serving you as in, in council. Okay, besides that, I'm a member of First Baptist Church and I've served many committees there. I desire to serve you. I want to bring honesty and integrity and uh, serve you in the office in a way we deserve to be served. for our two auditor candidates.
Rochester, Logansport. I have a bachelor's degree from Ball State University in corporate finance, and I have 41 years experience in accounting, taxes, finance, and helping manage, uh, helping businesses manage their business. My business is the business of helping other businesses, as I like to put it. So we've been, we've been doing this for a long time. I took over the company from my father in 1999. And this, you know, accounting, taxes, budgeting, finance, this is all I've ever done all my life. And I do believe that uh, my experience qualifies me for this position and I think it would be uh, invaluable what we're going to be facing. Fulton County, like so many other counties, is going to be facing a lot of challenges, a lot of issues. Uh, and there's going to be some difficult choices that are going to be neat, that will have to be made. And I think that the opportunity uh, for me to offer my skill set to help solve these problems can be an asset to the county. Um, I love Fulton County. If I were asked why do I want to run for this position, I would have to say that I love this county. I want to see it successful. I want to see the businesses successful. I want to see the family solid. And it, um, I don't know, a lot of it comes back to how taxpayer funds are used, and that's what County Council does. County Council lays out a lot of the financial decisions that, uh, that we face. And those decisions need to be responsible and they need to be well thought out. And I think this is one of, another one of my assets. I'm a problem solver. My, uh, like I say, my business has been solving problems for years. And this is what we do. I don't believe there's one answer for anything. You need to look at everything. And I also believe it's important to listen to the people, the taxpayers. I mean, we are spending their money running this county. And I feel it's very important that they have an input, everyone has an input on how these situations are handled. And I'm a taxpayer like everyone else, and I don't believe in waste, and I believe your viewpoints are important. And if I'm elected, I promise that your, your concerns and your views will be heard at the county level. And again, my name is Barry Baldwin. I'm running for Fulton County Council at Large. And I appreciate your support. Also, get out and vote May the 7th. This is the first election, May the 7th. So. Okay, I'm just going by the flyer, so there's no particular order here other than I'm going by the flyer. So, Matthew Finke is, is next up. So for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Matt Finke, and if I'm being perfectly honest with you, I bring next to no political experience with me, and that's not a bad thing. What I do bring with me is a lot of practical experience, uh, married for almost 21 years, four children. Um, I've lived paycheck to paycheck, and I've lived very comfortable, and sometimes that experience is better than almost anything else you can have, and it does relate very well to doing your part to run a county. So I've uh, been in Fulton County since 2006. I was a graduate of Purdue. My wife is from the Mace area. We moved back up here. Um, we lived in Miami County for a while and moved uh, into Fulton County. In 2013, we've been here ever since, lived near Tijuana. Our kids go to school casting. And uh, we, uh, we, we really like this county. Uh, I want to see it succeed. Uh, it's my firm belief that we are building the future right now, and I want some place where my kids, even if they don't come back and live permanently, I want this place to be a county that our kids can come back. And that means making sure that small businesses thrive, making sure that people have a place to come back to. Um, we, we need to, we need to give our best now for the residents later. And I decided that I've got enough time to do this. I don't have much time to do it. That's okay. I've got 
uh, two kids will be in college next year, and I guess I must have decided I had too much free time on my hands, so <laughs> I might as well do something else. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm eager to do this. Uh, I want to be here to do the best I can for, for my family, and that translates into doing the best I can for the residents of Fulton County. And that's all I have. Thank you.
since filing for candidacy in January, I've attended all of the council meetings, all of the commissioner meetings, I've attended the meeting with the attorney general, attended tip training, and went to all the legislative breakfasts. Um, I do this to stay current with events in Fulton County and to gain knowledge in the role that I may be elected to. Um, I'm no stranger to county government. I've been married to it through my husband for several years. Um, so I've been exposed to the workings of county government and I know its complexity and I know there is much to learn. And this is why I've already begun to gain knowledge on current council and county issues. And I will continue to educate myself to make the best decisions for Fulton County. Uh, I grew up in the Fletcher's Lake area. I attended Caston and then attended ISU and received my bachelor's degree. Um, I have experience in banking and management. I work with budgets and I'm currently a small business owner with my husband. Uh, I feel like we have good leadership in place and we have like-minded people uh, that want progress for Fulton County and the dedicated people and people with the same goals of improving Fulton County, uh, we can accomplish big things. Um, thank you for your time and I ask you to please check the box for County Geyer, County Council at Large and I will do my best to keep the boys in line.
certainly not going to say, oh, we need this, we need this, let's do this, we got the money. No, no, you need to look at the whole thing and then uh, piece it out and see which, which would be the best way to go. I never make a, a decision overnight. You know, I like to look at it, study it, think on it, and then go from there, work it out. So I guess just to face value, I would say our, our ambulance service would be a priority. I think this was pretty easy for me. Uh, $2 million would go to our county schools to make sure that they have the facilities that they need. Uh, primarily, uh, something that I push for a lot is expanding our school's uh, vocational education. Um, not everybody needs to go to college. Uh, my oldest son is currently studying at uh, Ivy Tech in Kokomo to be a machinist and tool and die maker. My daughter, who's graduating uh, this year, has been accepted to Purdue to be a pharmacist. Sure. Vocational schools are just as important as everything else, and I feel that that's one place that our county really lacks when you look at Logansport has a fantastic vocational facility. Uh, Kokomo, I, I don't know if Kosciuszko does, but there, there are other facilities, other, other areas nearby that are blowing us out of the water as far as that's concerned. So my $2 million is going to those schools to help them fill in gaps where they need it, mostly in vocational education. Now, right now, it's very sad to see the ambulance. We've got to get something done with it. Two million dollars to give us a good start to get it going on the we figure out. And that's we talk. Yeah, they the orders too. It's got the ambulance going right now. That's our biggest headache at the moment. Um, I think two million dollars would probably be a godsend for us. Ambulance service would be an answer to a lot of headaches. Um, there's always there's always things. <laughs> Two million dollars would be very easily easily spent. <laughs> so, but right now I think the ambulance service would be the main priority. Other questions? Going once? Oh, that's a question. Okay. <laughs> and I don't assume you want the microphone. Yeah. As long as RTC can. <laughs> <laughs> so, do, do any of the candidates have a, an idea in mind in how to accomplish our, our task for an email service? Do you have a specific idea in mind <clears throat> or any thought through uh, a, a way of finding funds, creating funds, setting funds aside to pay for uh, at least a portion of what we're going to have to spend for this. Um, I think that's a hard question without being on council, without having knowledge of um, budgets and accounts. Um, I, it's a hard question to answer. <laughs> um, right now, um, I guess I would look for, do we have anything uh, built in for, as far as future planning? We'll look to that first. Um, but as I said before, it's a, it's a complex system. And where to pull from, I, I couldn't tell you right now. Well, I hate to say it, but right now we've looked at a lot of options and I mean, well, the county just doesn't have the money offhand to spend. We're probably going to have to you know, raise taxes a little bit, like a couple tenths of a percent. And everyone hates to do it, but also no one wants to get on an animal service, so you know, we're stuck between a rock and a hard place. And we say hate to do it, but I mean, it's, nobody likes to raise taxes unless you're a little minor raise, but you know, it's probably going to come down to that. So just like they said already, uh, nobody likes extra taxes. It's it, it's the absolute worst. Um, it is necessary evil in this in this situation just because it is a it's a it's a county service that is provided to everybody in this county and some people who are just traveling through our county. It it has to happen. There's no two ways about it. Uh, we can't rely on other communities to nearby to, to fill in the gaps. We we have to figure out something. 
Um, one thing I, I think we should definitely do is exhaust every last grant, whether it's state, federal, otherwise, to make sure that we have searched high and low for every additional cent that we can find. Um, and, and I do think we do need to take a real hard look at what our county budget looks like and make sure that we're not wasting any money there. Uh, all, all, the, all the departments need their, their budget because they have a job to do, and they can't do that job without, without money. Um, but if if the citizens of Fulton County are going to feel the pinch, then everybody needs to feel the pinch. So we need to exhaust all of our grant opportunities and make sure that we're not wasting money anywhere else that could be otherwise spent for animal service. I think I would have to agree with that. I know I don't think there's any um, set solution, and without me being involved with the council prior to just making this decision now, I, I couldn't get an answer to that question, but I, I am familiar with the decision-making process, and I do agree the whole budget needs to be looked at, grant opportunities do need to be explored, and trim the fat wherever we can. I mean, we might have to tighten our belts in some area and, and get rid of some things that don't need to be there, and I, that would be a starting point. The only thing that I am sure of is there is a solution for everything, and I know we can find it. So. Other questions?
Judge. Hard questions. Hard questions. Amy, your father's not here about asking about his genealogy. <laughs> <laughs> no, you were spared that tonight. Okay. <laughs> All right. No Thank questions you. for Judge Heller. Oh, good. Oh, okay. We're going to talk Okay. I just read recently that you're going to have a new program for the women that have had drug problems. We've had graduates for the, the gentlemen, but now there's a new program for the women. Is that correct? Not specifically through the court system. Now that may be some through the jail. The jail has a lot of different okay. programs that okay. they started up with okay. Jay Kathy and most recent. And so that might be part of their programming. And I will say that uh, Sheriff Heisen has done a great job of getting services within the jail. Because I will tell you, the way I look at or look at the criminal side of things, I look at every, the more tools we have in the toolbox, the better, because one size does not fit all. And if you get services going in the jail and continue that coming out, that's what's important. I think sometimes people look at the criminal justice system as, you know, be tough on crime. But every crime is different. There are some crimes that require incarceration. There's some crimes that require incarceration in the Department of Corrections. There's some crimes that require incarceration in the Fulton County Jail. There are other crimes that require more rehabilitative services. And the more services we can have like that, it makes the county better overall. Because I'll tell you what we're faced with in the criminal justice system are the same society problems that, that is throughout the nation. And that's poverty, that's substance abuse, um, it's a lot of times it's generational. And that's the reason why you've got to treat every case individually and not take a cookie cutter approach as to how you rule from the bench. Any other questions? Okay, we're going to move on to the next item.
three kids, Ryan, who is a Deputy Sheriff K-9 officer. Um, Austin is a sophomore at Texas State, and Jalen is a freshman at Ball State. I have a daughter, Jerry Cheryl Brown, and a granddaughter of the late Richard and Mary Eden Key. I've worked in county government for 18 years, 10 years being in the health department, and the last eight as the first deputy treasurer. And I feel my experience with the county government these last 10 years, 18 years have prepared me to be the next Bolt County Treasurer. And I appreciate your vote. Thank you. have satellite voting those two Saturdays. Um, the first Saturday will be in Tama and at Kiwana, and the second Saturday will be Grass Creek and Lighters Ford, and then Election Day. So we need workers for all of that. Um, so if you're interested in working, as long as you are not running for office or related to somebody running for office, um, we would appreciate your help. Just contact Mike or your precinct committee men to let them know that you want to work. Um, anything else that anybody's have any questions? Is there any other Democrats or independents that's on the ballot or filed yet? No, no, and they can't now. They can't now. So, they so no, can't it's now? Only, no, okay. not until July. Oh, okay. Something second, or sixth, like third. So, no, they can't. They're, so we're the only ones with a contested race. Now, Dawn, if somebody is a delegate, because I know that was a question that we had, if somebody's a delegate, if they're running for just a party position, are they allowed to work at the polls? No. If they're a delegate, we did a resolution this year that they are allowed to work at the polls. Okay. Since it's just a party position, they can work at the polls. And there is a resolution for that. Since we're on RTC, do you want to talk a little bit about the 16 and 17 year old thing? Oh, and we also did a resolution this year. Um, Diego, our state secretary, has really pushed this this year that um, 16 and 17 year olds can work the polls. So um, Stephen Williams has reached out to Rochester schools. I think we're going to possibly have four students to work the polls. Um, but th we also have done a resolution for that so that they can work the polls and we're going to put 
one at each polling site. And um, we're just trying to get some younger people involved in the election process and the party. Um, I think it'll be a good thing and hopefully we get some new workers because some of our workers are aging out and hauling around equipment's kind of heavy so that makes it a little rough for them too so the younger people can help with that. It's just a long day and everybody needs to know that. <laughs> Any other questions? So Don, remind me of the uh, the unopposed, because you know, if, if you have a lot of unopposed positions, you'll get a ballot with all these names on it with nobody running. So I, what, did the, what did the election board decide on the unopposed? Are they going to be on the ballot or not? Yes. Okay. Everybody's on the ballot. Awesome. Yeah, because, you know, I mean, even though it's the, it is the primary, which is very important, but they could be contested in the general, so they need to be on the ballot now. Sure. Um, so yes, everybody is on the ballot. Oh, one other thing, at the libraries we put out books that have um, screenshots of the ballot. So instead of seeing the ballot on the wall at the vote centers, I mean, you will still see that. But if you want to go to the library, you can flip through the books and you can see exactly what the ballot is going to look like, like on the machines something we just thought some older people and, and other people, I'm not just saying the older people, but many people have said it sure would be nice if we saw what it was going to look like on the machine because like unopposed, there's one person, Judge Heller. I, I'm going to tell you, I voted for you about 15 times already. Thank goodness. Because we were testing the machine. I'm glad Judge that I did. Heller, <laughs> <laughs> I don't like to register my dog. <laughs> So, but yeah. So there, if you're if you're interested in looking at the you know the screenshots to see what the ballots actually going to look like, you can go to the libraries and look at it that way also ahead of time. What are the vote centers that will be open? Did you say that already? I know we talked about the external community ones, but on the day of election, on the, the day of election, it'll be the six vote centers. It'll be Akron, um, the community center in Rochester. It will be the museum. Um, the fairgrounds, Kiwana, Fulton, Fulton, sorry. Is that five? I think that's six. Six, yeah. Okay. Here we go. Any other questions? So Dawn is our county clerk and she is doing a fantastic job and, and I work very closely with her on a lot of things going through. So can you give Dawn a hand? With that? Okay. Well that's all I have. And uh, again, I'd just like to thank everybody for coming out tonight. And you know, the whole reason we do this is to give the candidates a chance to get in front of the voters, start that relationship, and give the, the voters a chance to see and hear who's going to be on the main ballot. And in my opinion, I've not hid this from anybody, it's probably my mantra by now, I think the primary is much more important than November. The primary is when you're deciding on who's going to you know, represent the party in the November election. So this is your opportunity to choose between the people that are running and pick the best candidate. When you get to November, you've got two candidates to choose from. And a lot of times, you know, especially on the national side of things, you're just holding your nose and voting for the person that you think is the least worst candidate. But in Fulton County, we are the, the county that gives voters choices. And the choices come in May. So come out in May and vote in the primary and choose a candidate that, that is going to represent you in county government. So please, make it a point. Come out in the May primary and vote. On your calendar, put save the date for September 7th or the 14th. We have reserved the Fulton Community Center for the Lincoln Day for this year. We are waiting on our candidate to, or our um, keynote speaker to choose which date works better for them. So if you want to just kind of in your mind or on your calendar, the September 7th 
or the 14th, just kind of the think ahead to get that on your calendar. So we will release the information once we have it. So. Thank you all for coming.